Hi, I'm Carol Angela Davis, bringing you your stories for Tuesday. It is July 12th, 2011. We're going to begin with some news for you. Of course, we're on our debt ceiling watch, as you know. So we begin for, with some news for you on that. Apparently, President Obama has offered to raise the Medicare eligibility rate for age from 65 to 67. As you know, lots of Democrats are against this. They want to exclude uh, entitlement programs from cuts. The word is that Obama offered to raise the el eligibility age. The president urging both sides to compromise. He is particularly criticizing rank-and-file Republicans for allegedly hamstringing House Speaker John Boehner. The president saying these rank-and-file Republicans have complicated the toss by taking irresponsible positions. Now, the president went on to chide Democrats as well for resisting entitlement cuts. Obama says a my way or the highway approach simply will not get a deal done. He says uh, that, that everybody has got to compromise. Everybody must comp compromise. Excuse me, Republicans, for their part, you know what they say, adding tax increases to the equation doesn't balance anything. That's what John Boehner said, adding the American people understand that tax hikes destroy jobs. Well, they've had the tax cuts for I don't know how long, and we're in the worst condition we've been in in years. So they're not creating jobs, so why should we give them a I, I don't get it. They don't deserve it. Let's move on. Meanwhile, Democratic leaders are pressuring Wall Street and the business community at large to urge Republicans to soften their demands. Apparently, business groups, and we're talking about the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the National Association of Manufacturers, and the Business Roundtable, they are apparently all applying pressure. The question I have is, does it really have any teeth? They gotta apply pressure with the jaws of life. That's how they've gotta do it. If they're not doing it like that, it doesn't count, okay? Because President Obama has demanded that the tax breaks, they gotta go. The president says that these uh, groups are somewhat hesitant to weigh in on the issues publicly. Even though they say things privately to the president, it seems they don't want to anger Republican lawmakers because of other business they have pending in front of Congress. Well, the, the Republicans are going to have to, to move their position or the country is going to go down. And frankly, I'm someone who believes that it would be horrible if the country went down. But I have to say that we also felt that way when it was time to bail out the banks. And let's face it, folks, we all took that position. They bailed out the banks. And the only people who have benefited from the bank bailout are the banks themselves, the wealthy. The banks, nobody else has had People's houses are still getting taken. They have, have they done any loan modifications at all? Any, has anybody, if you know anybody out there who's gotten a loan modification, please write to me. I don't know anybody who's gotten their loan modified. Nothing's going on. So, you know, you have to make an argument for what if the worst-case scenario happens. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe everything will come and fall and go to, to hell in a handbasket, and we'll all start over. And maybe that's the great equalizer that this country is going to have to have. So if Republicans hold their position, it is what it is, okay? But the wealthy are going to have to chip in one way or another, even their Either they're going to get a tax hike or the country's going to fall apart and they're going to come down anyway. So they have to, you have to think about that from all sides. All right, let's go on. What are the pundits saying? Here's David Gergen. Here's what he said about the matter. He says both sides have painted themselves in a corner. He says, the, this is a quote, the Republicans were the first to paint themselves into a corner. No fewer than 230 members of the House, mostly Republicans, signed pledges during the campaigns that they would refuse to raise taxes when they went to Washington. Their resistance to new taxes is entirely understandable. As the Wall Street Journal editorialized Monday morning, joined by column, a columnist from the New York Times, conservatives feel strongly that Obama raised the spending enormously in the first part of his term, and they don't want to become, as they say, tax collectors for the welfare state. Are they kidding? I love the fact that these people want no connection to welfare the welfare state, and at its purest form, to welfare. But you know what? When the welfare money came into the people, and the people cast the welfare checks or took the, 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 the whatever, the aid, the, the, the download from the whatever state they're in, and they took that money to your grocery store, you took it. When they took that money to the department store and bought things, you took it. When they bought gas, you took it. When they paid rent, you took it. And guess what? You are the direct beneficiaries of welfare state mentality type dollars. And now that you may have to ante up a little bit, you don't want the money. But it doesn't work that way. You got it. Sorry. It just does not work that way. So you're very concerned. All right, let's go on. Rupert Murdoch. Oh, boy. He... 
Can you believe the kind of trouble he's in? Get this. You know who he is, of course. Fox, you know, Fox News Corp, Fox News. The hacking scandal is getting worse. There may be a U.S. investigation, if you can believe that. Legal experts say the potential liability flows from journalists at individual newspapers. Okay, we're talking about journalists at individual newspapers. We're talking about, uh, the, for example, the news of the world. It would flow from that company to its parent, News International, and from there to its parent, which is News Corp. That is a publicly held company right here, the good old U.S. of A. And therefore, it is subject to U.S. laws. You betcha. Here's what Mike Kohler, a professor of business law at Butler University uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Here's what he says, quote, The allegation so far with this phone hacking scandal includes a component where someone within News Corp's organization perhaps made payments to London police officers to perhaps obtain information uh, that would thus allow News of the World to write newspapers and sell newspapers, unquote. Well, apparently, if this is so, it could violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Now, the professor says this is, quote, a U.S. law that generally prohibits the payment of money or anything of value to a foreign official for a business purpose, unquote. Now, that, means, that makes it a matter for the U.S. Justice Department. Legal experts add, if Rupert Murdoch, the head of News Corp, knew what was going on and authorized it even implicitly, he could have some potential exposure. Apparently, ignorance confers no protection. Rupert Murdoch, as you know, he's 80 years old, born in Australia, became a U.S. citizen in 1985. Oh, the tangled web we weave. There are people here in the United States that Rupert Murdoch has been, his organization, I should say, Fox News, has been very nasty to. And he could face a criminal investigation here. It's, a, you know what, I'll tell you something. Be careful. The people in glass houses, please refrain from throwing stones. <laughs> Those are your stories. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. News stories. Have yourself a wonderful day. You can follow me on Twitter if you like, Carol Angela D, or you can join me on Facebook, Carol Angela Davis, or just send me an email, carolangeladavis at gmail. See you tomorrow.